Um, yes, so we are on the Mare Liberum. Mare Liberum is uh, the ship of the same named organization, Mare Liberum, that um, is a Berlin-based organization that has been operating in the Aegean, mainly around Lesbos, for two years now. Um, what we do is human rights monitoring. We um, basically monitor the situation on sea, because we are a ship. We um, spend time on the borderline to be present as a civil eye on the things that are going on there. That is mainly normally a zone of um, no, no presence of civil organizations in the sense of there's military operations and there's people in small boats that are trying to cross. So um, we think that by us being present there, since we are also a big ship, we have media attention and so on. We change the situation also already for the better of human rights. And then what we do is we document and we report um, things that we observe. That can be um, special specific incidents that um, we documented human rights violation, but it can also be pattern or ways of operation of uh, the Coast Guards that we find worthy to report. That means also that not everything that not many things that we see are not in that sense illegal. So considering it from a legal perspective, they are according to to the the law. But we still think that they are not according to human rights as an idea of um, in itself. Um, so as an example, um, the since we have no in this area we have a a, a border that is a line. No, there's no international waters. Um, that means that there's cooperation agreements between the Coast Guard of Turkey and the Coast Guard of Greece and, the, and Frontex, um, how they deal with rescue situations on the borderline, which means that um, they are allowed to cooperate in certain cases, but then they stretch this co these agreements like to the nowhere, um, and it's very hard to, on a legal base, um, get into this as an example um, obviously, the Greek Coast Guard is not allowed to stop a boat in that is already in their waters and wait for the Turkish to pick them up. That would be a pushback. But then if they would always say, but it's according to the agreement and the Turkish ask us to help and so on. So it's a, like legally, it's a bit of a gray zone. So we think it's for as our work is also to have public attention and to do media work on this because... Um, also, these kinds of things that are maybe in a, within the legal frame, or maybe not, it's still not according to human rights, and it's still a violation of the rights of people that are on the move. Um, yeah, so this is what we basically do normally. Um, like, speaking about um, the last weeks of, our, of us as a ship, um, we um, have been here on Lesbos in the shipyard time, as we did also last winter, so it's kind of a normal procedure. And then the events kind of overruled us, I would say, as many other other NGOs were kind of overruled by the events, and I think everyone a bit on this island. Um, so in the in this moment where you where um, the protests against the closed camps kind of escalated. Um, we had been here with our ship and we started also to report about things and we saw that how the tension was growing on the island. And and um, for my perception, the moment that it really like showed me the escalation was um, like on on Sunday, on Sunday um, 1st of March. Um, that was two days after Erdogan announced that they will not stop the stop the boats on their side anymore, so they will open the border, no? <laughs> as a way of pushing pressure on the EU, crazy enough that he's using the lives of people to put political pressure on, on the EU. But um, yeah, like two days after this, and it was a Sunday of like a lot of crossings, and we had, um, there was one, there's two stories that I found really, really impressive, and that I also saw of like from, from shore, because we were not operating with the ship, but I saw from like first hand, and um, one was, um, it's the story of one boat that um, they had been attacked in the very early morning hours by a, mass, by a boat with mass people. It's not clear who they are. It could be Coast Guard, could be whoever. They'd been attacked and they'd been taken away their engine, so they didn't have an engine anymore. But they managed to cross into um, 
uh, to Greek waters, and they arrived in Greek waters. Um, and there was a there was um, a message to the Coast Guard that they are there. So Coast Guard arrived, Frontex arrived, Greek Coast Guard arrived, but they didn't rescue. They waited the whole day for the Turkish to arrive, even though it was in Greek water. Or I don't know what they waited for. At least they didn't rescue. So it was kind of a you could see from shore there was a dinghy. And next to it was an Italian Frontex boat, and they didn't do nothing, even though there was reported that people are like getting into the water to try and push the boat by swimming because they were so desperate and because they had no other means to move. And it was so close to shore. And then the same day, and actually pretty close, like also um, from geographically seen, really close in, in Femi, that's a little village in the south of Lesbos, um, there was the incident of a dinghy that arrived in port of this little village. And they, there was a bunch of people gathering in the beginning and it became more and more so it was like 100, 200 people that were so aggressively in the sport that the dinghy couldn't, like people from the dinghy couldn't leave and then in the in the same incident there was a, uh, also a, a journalist um, being beaten up and as we arrived in the situation we saw that there is no way of staying there, like no way also of like an anti-fascist try to, to stop this from happening because it was just too many um, so for me, this was one of the moments where I thought, wow, the situation is really <laughs> getting really crazy. Um, yeah, and this was even before everything with us started, so... Um, um, yeah, maybe speaking, like, just to stay with this for a moment, with speaking about boats and crossings. Um, after these first two days where there was a lot of arrivals, um, the, it kind of stopped again also because Turkish Coast Guard started to operate but what was um, really um, changed from before was that these people that arrived newly in these days um, they were not they couldn't apply for asylum they couldn't even actually enter onto the island they were all um, uh, gathered up in the port area and put into a warship that was supposed to leave for the mainland to, um, and to have people deported directly without even having the possibility to be registered or anything at all, to be seen their case or anything. So this is basically like a, um, a stop into the right for asylum, what Greece did just there. And um, it's a crazy reaction on the situation, but then to blame only the Greek government would also, I think, not be the right thing because there's a clear responsibility of the EU um, and all the member states of the EU concerning this situation because it's them that decide that the border is there and that the policy is like this and the deal also between EU and Turkey that we have for six years now it's it's made by all the states no so it's not just on Greek on Greece to blame and uh, yeah speaking about us um, we had been in the shipyard um, in a little port. Here in the south of the island and um, the 2nd of March, that's Monday of last week, we were attacked by a group of like 10, 15 people masked, like completely covered faces. Um, they were shouting at us and, and like showing us in a violent way that we should leave from there. One guy carried a, um, a jerry can with gasoline and he even started to like pour it on deck. And so it was clear we had to leave, so we left as fast as possible. Um, what was actually really, really heartwarming to see was that there was two um, people from the local village that they tried to help us. They supported us, no? They tried to calm down, down these people and they helped us by taking in the lines without having to leave them on shore. And for me, this is, um, it shows that there's, I mean, there is a lot of, for sure, um, aggressive, violent, right-wing people and strong fascists um, going to the like the growing power but of course there's a lot of people that are in solidarity with NGO workers with refugees that try they don't want the island to to be um, overtaken by the the fascist ideas and this in this incident for, for me was really important so um, we we left and the next day we faced a similar situation. We docked in a port in another one to take supplies. There was already people gathering and we we left quite pretty fast because it was clear we cannot stay there. 
we were even followed by them in a small boat for a short moment. They left when they saw we left. And then because it was a bay, some people followed us on, also on shore with cars to kind of make us clear, <laughs> go this way. Um, so we left for the open sea and um, we tried two days later to dock in Mitilini port and the same thing happened again. We came, there was already people gathering and there was kind of fight starting already with people that tried to support us and with them gathering. So we also decided to leave because we thought the situation was um, And also in all of these incidents, actually the, the Coast Guard and the Port Authorities, they told us they cannot guarantee our safety. And they recommended us to leave or to rather leave the island. Um, and we, yeah, then we spent some days to kind of prepare and think and also work with more like public pressure. And and finally, uh, yesterday we managed to, to find a place in Matilini Port where the uh, of, of authorities provided us for safety. So now we don't know. I think still if we would talk in the normal port area, probably pretty sure there would be because also in this very secure area of the custom area where we were allowed to dock yesterday, we saw that on the other side of the fence there were some known fascists already gathering, so I think the risk is still there. Um, but we, we still hope now, we, we got some supplies now, and we still hope that we can go and leave for the monitoring mission for the, for the water area um, pretty soon, because we think even now that the Turkish Coast Guard is operating again um, and there's not a lot of arrivals but we think it's still important that we are in this area to be monitoring also what is going on to be able to be 